Okay, welcome. Uh, we're going to do a little mini lesson on energy flow within ecosystems. I will be covering things like the basic relationships uh, of those interactions, food webs, and food chains. So when we first start talking about energy flow within an ecosystem, we first have to talk about the interactions that go on uh, within the communities in those ecosystems. Uh, there are three main types that we'll talk about today. Uh, one is the predator-prey relationship, one is competition, one is um, symbiosis and the forms of symbiosis within uh, those interactions. As we quickly uh, run through these interactions, the first one we'll talk about is the predator-prey relationship. It's one that you're probably the most uh, aware of uh, since we talk about this a lot when we're in elementary school. Uh, what we're, and this is a relationship where one animal captures and feeds on another animal. That animal that does the capturing is the predator. The one that it gets eaten is the prey. And um, the relationship that we want to look at in particular is that the predators actually limit the size of the prey population. Um, and it's a very important relationship. And it also does uh, limit the locations where um, the predators can live and also where the prey can live. So it's an interesting relationship when it comes down to uh, what's determined in that ecosystem. Okay, we're going to use this example of the moose and the wolves as an example of how uh, predators determine the size of the prey, the prey determines the size of the, of the predator populations in a given area. You now this is a, a real true life example that has lots and lots of data on it. It's a very historical um, case study. Uh, if you take a look at the moose population it's low at first, it, it climbs, and then it gets lower, and then it climbs again. And that's because of the wolf population. At first, the wolf population was at its peak, and then when it's at its peak, it's eating lots more uh, moose to, to sustain its population. But when the numbers were decreasing in the moose, the, uh, the wolves just couldn't sustain their population. There wasn't enough food for them. So... They couldn't reproduce as much, and so their population dipped a little bit. As it dipped, they ate less moose, and there was more uh, moose available to reproduce and eat. And as they increased, there was lots of food. Then all of a sudden, the, the wolves went nuts, and they had enough food to sustain a larger population. When they are at its peak, these guys, uh, the moose, then were at its uh, um, dip there in its valley, and then it just kept on cycling. Uh, but again, this is a great case study to show how the predator affects the prey population and the prey can actually affect the predator population as well. The second interaction is competition. And competition is where we have more than one organism attempting to use a limited resource at the same time. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and simple. Um, they're competing over the same resource. And we can see um, competition working in nature, just like you see in the pictures here. Uh, in plants where you have these big, tall trees that are really um, best fit for receiving the sun first. And they get all the sun. You have all the rest of these plants trying to, um, to get a little bit of space where the sun's uh, sifting through the, the, the tall canopy of the trees. And you see competition happening even in the plant world. Here in the middle picture, you see the lion who made a kill and the hyena is trying to trying to um, outdo one another as well as the lion in terms of getting the, the, the carcass. And um, you can see the same thing with this butterfly and this bee uh, competing over the same limited resources. And that was competition. Um, our last interaction is called symbiosis. And symbiosis is any relationship where two species live closely together. And when we mean closely together, you'll see pictures of of how closely that means. Um, there are three main types of symbiosis that we will look at in this video. There's mutualism, there's commensalism, and there is parasitism. We'll run through each one rather quickly uh, here in the next few slides. The first is mutualism, and mutualism is a relationship where they're living closely together, but both organisms receive some sort of benefit. Um, you can see up here in this picture, the bee is going to get the nectar from the, that, this flower, but the flower is going to attach some of its pollen to this honeybee, and they're going to uh, get the bee to do some pollinating uh, from flower to flower as it goes and collects its nectar. 
um, again, both organisms benefit. Um, the sea anemone and the clownfish. Uh, the, the clownfish gets some protection and the anemone is able to, um, to uh, get some feeding benefits from um, the clownfish as well. You see the rhino down here with the birds. The birds are picking off the parasites off the, the skin um, of the, uh, the rhino and, and the rhino receives that benefit of not having parasites on it. So again, uh, mutualism is where both organisms benefit from uh, this relationship. Uh, the next relationship is commensalism. Um, this is where one of the organisms actually benefits and the other is neither benefited nor harmed. Um, so uh, in each of these pictures, you'll see one organism that's just kind of doing their deal and, and uh, living life where the other one is you know, right next to them, living closely in their space, sometimes even attached to them as the whale and the shark are and even the orchid in, in this uh, picture. But they're receiving all the benefit whether it's uh, you know being able to receive some better, staying away from prey, or gathering some uh, food along with uh, the other organism, but in any case, it's where one benefits and the other is neither harmed nor benefited. And finally, the last symbiotic relationship we talk about is parasitism, and parasitism is where one organism lives on or in another that is harmed by them being there. Uh, the one you probably relate with most is this one right in the middle, and that's the the tapeworm and the tapeworm attaches itself to the intestine and uh, basically uh, sucks the nutrients right out of the, the food that's uh, being digested uh, before the host can actually get it. Uh, the host gets weakened. A lot of times will will die because of it or be eaten because it's a lot weaker. Uh, the aphids and the mosquitoes do basically the same thing, but they may not be able to take it right down to the death, but uh, they, do our, they do destroy and, and harm their host as well. Now, so far, all of the uh, interactions that we have talked about involve eating or feeding um, either off of the host or, or off of another organism. Um, why do they all involve eating or feeding? Uh, that's a really good question. That's something that we're going to answer in the, in the next uh, little bit of this video. And, you know, the answer might be simple. Um, you know, there's two main reasons that we eat to begin with, and that is, one, we need some raw materials to actually build ourselves with. And one, we need raw materials to create energy with. You know, and, and when we think about um, the idea of energy, we probably need that energy to even build with. So, you know, and it comes right back down to this idea of energy. We're going to see how that plays and, and takes shape here shortly. And we analyze uh, this flow of energy within an ecosystem by just ask, asking the initial question is what eats what. Obviously, um, we saw some interactions at the beginning of this video. Um, there are some real simple interactions that lead to some complex relationships within these ecosystems. Let's start by looking at the simple interaction first. We're gonna call this simple interaction a food chain. Uh, a food chain, uh, like chains, has links. Um, each link being impo as important as the one it's linked to. And so if we take a look at an example of a food chain, we will see a nice linked relationship. This real simple interaction, one link to the other, to the other, to the other. If one link um, is missing, the whole chain falls apart. Now you'll notice that all of these things up here are going to be biotic factors or living. And then we have the one abiotic factor, which is the sun. The sun is that that provides the energy, um, the initial energy to the grass um, that carries on throughout the, uh, the food chain. Now, um, no, also notice that within our um, food chain, we, have, we use arrows to show which direction the energy itself is flowing. So the sun provides the energy for the grass to provide the energy for the grasshopper um, the energy goes into the grasshopper. You know, the frog acquires that energy by eating the, the grasshopper, um, and so on and so forth. And finally, it ends with um, the earthworm as its decomposer here. Now, those simple interactions lead to some complex relationships. Now, the diagram we use uh, to describe that complex relationship within an ecosystem is called a food web. Um, much like a spider web, we have lots of different connections that we can get to a given point multiple ways. Um, so 
uh, food web shows all the possible food chains that can happen within a given ecosystem. And here are two examples of, of food webs, much more complicated looking, much more complex than a uh, food chain. Notice that if one of these pieces drops out, it's not going to cause the whole thing to fall apart like the, uh, the food chain. If we're missing one link, the whole thing kind of is dysfunctional at that point. Here there's multiple options in terms of um, uh, sustaining this ecosystem. But again, um, as you take a look at, um, the arrows are always fo uh, following the direction that the, the energy is flowing in. The phytoplankton get eaten by the mayfly, so the mayfly acquires the, that energy. Uh, the mayflies are eaten by the, the frogs. They acquire the mayflies' energy, and so on and so forth. And uh, both of these are good examples of, of food webs and shows the complex interactions that goes, um, goes on within an ecosystem. And uh, that's all there is to energy flow. Uh, we talked at first. We talked about the interactions that happen within ecosystem. It usually involved one organism eating another, or aiding another organism and getting more food, uh, leading that up to understanding. There's some simple interactions. Uh, what we're going to call food chains, where uh, the energy flows from one step to the other, and then finally, there's a complex relationship within an ecosystem where there's a lot of food chains that are interconnected and energy flows amongst, uh, amongst those organisms in that uh, particular ecosystem.